and welcome to Ozarks Live. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you're having a good day. It is a good day. It's a beautiful day to get out. It's very nice. You've been out today, right? Where'd you I, go? I have. Well, I went to get something to eat. I went to Ronald McDonald House of the Ozarks. Is where All I went right. Early today. And, uh, you know, we're going to have Bonnie Keller on in a little bit talking about the reason I was there, getting some information. Yeah, because you and Kelly have an event coming up, I think. Yes, yes we do. Yes, Look we forward do. to that. Mm -hmm. um, I went out today, uh, you know, Conrad from the library yeah. who comes on. Um, so there's a thing called From Cannons to the Calaboose, a Springfield Hidden History Hunt. And if you go into the library, you can get one of these handy dandy little guides and it gives you all of these places to go and scout out, learn a little something about Springfield, take a little selfie, send it to the library, and then you get a prize. You do? Yeah. Okay, now you say cannons to, to calaboose. I, mm -hmm. I got the idea of where the calaboose is. What cannon are we talking about? Okay. Any idea? The cannons on the Drury University campus. Oh, okay. Yes, Civil War cannons donated to Drury. And if you don't know off the top of your head, you might be like, oh, I don't know that I've seen those. Mm -hmm. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are a dozen, a dozen locations on here. Some are all around the square. Other ones are much further out, but it's all Springfield history. That's pretty cool. It is cool, and people are loving it. If you go to their website, you can find all sorts of, and their Facebook page, all sorts of selfies, people taking their kids out and looking for these. So anyway, Conrad and I uh, hit the ground rolling this morning and went out and found a few of them, so yeah. I like that. I <laughs> mean, you, you, get, you get a feel for history when you go to the spot that something has happened. Yes. So you get a better perspective of all that. I really like that. That's yeah. a great idea. It's going to be fun, and we'll have that for you tomorrow. But we have quite the show for you guys today. It's a full house here at Ozarks Live. Bruce Porter from the Resource Center will be here to talk all about his upcoming estate planning workshop. And as I mentioned earlier, Bonnie Keller is stopping by to talk to us all about the Red Shoe Gala, which is happening this Friday and give us an update on the Ronald McDonald House. Such good work they do yeah. over there. Plus, the Bonsai Guy is here to tell us all about an event that he's got coming up this weekend in conjunction with Classic Rock Coffee. It's kind of a date night. We'll tell you about it. All right, we have that and a lot more. But before we get to all that, here's what's on the radar. Okay, I'll go first. Pompeii. An incredible place to visit. Have you been there? I've not, but haven't you been there? I, I was uh, around 1971-72. An incredible place. You can actually walk through the remains where in 79 AD Mount Vesuvius erupted and buried not only the city but also the people who live there under hot rock, volcanic ash, and poisonous gas. Now sometimes tourists at the site feel a need to take a little souvenir home with them. Not only is that wrong, but in most cases, illegal. But it may bring other consequences as well. Just recently, a young Canadian woman who was uh, about 15 years ago stole a couple of mosaic tiles, a piece of ceramics, and, an, and a piece of an amphora, which is like a, 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 oh, a jar with a very thin fluted neck and, and handles on either hmm. side, returned everything she could in a package, along with a note saying, Please take them back. They bring bad luck. She explained she had experienced a string of bad luck that included two bouts with breast cancer. Now, we are good people, and I don't want to pass this curse on to my family. She asked forgiveness regarding her careless act that I did years ago. Now, no word on her apology has affected the curse, but she's not alone. There have been enough of these occurrences that there is actually a museum at Pompeii to display all the return items and letters from previous thieves. I want to go see that. Yep. You know what? It sounds like that Gilligan's Island when he had the little tiki god necklace and everything went wrong. Remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Weird. I want to. Oh. I want to visit there so bad. Yeah. Oh, you should. I, Seeing yeah. Pompeii is it's incredible. It'll be life changing. Man, I want to travel again. Yeah, yeah. All right, I've got one for you. All right. Um, when the NBA season finally got underway, we heard about the bubble, right? Right. The bubble, the Orlando bubble, Been the very Disney, successful. Yes, the Disney bubble, whatever, the safe place where the teams trained and played. Well, this bubble concept has gone in a whole new direction with live music. Let me tell you about this. Wayne Coyne of Flaming Lips. He's got a bubble. He's rolled across the crowd in a bubble before. <laughs> but now he's thinking, you know, 
I want to expand that to the audience and get back to playing concerts again. He posted a pic on Instagram showing deflated bubbles inside a concert hall. Now, Coyne says he truly wants to stage a series of fully bubbled concerts in their native Oklahoma City. He told Brooklyn Vegan that at first it seemed absurd, but hey, why not? He says he is determined to figure out how to get close to fans without cross-contamination. I like so you, that. I, well, you may see this on TV first. You may see this out in an arena somewhere, but be ready for bubbles to come rolling at you from all directions. Anything cool. can happen. I know. All right. It's always heartwarming when you see a child playing with their pet, you know, running through the yard, playing fetch, playing hide and seek. But this one gives me the heebie jeebies. In bar, an eight year old in Israel likes to cool off in her backyard pool with her favorite pet, Belle. Mm -hmm. Belle is an 11 foot yellow python. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Inbar says Bell is good company during the coronavirus lockdown that has kept schools closed. Now, to give some context to this, Inbar does live on an animal sanctuary and has been raised with many animals, so she and Bell are longtime friends. In fact, Inbar's mother, Regev, says when her daughter was little, she swam in the bath with the snake. And now she has grown, and as you can see, the snake has two. So they now swim in the pool, and that's all natural for them. She knows people say she is crazy, letting her child do that, but she believes when a child is raised with animals, they become a person that cares about others and not about themselves. Very nice outlook, but it, like, wouldn't a guinea pig work a little better, maybe? Wouldn't make as interesting of photos and videos, but no, Ooh. no, no. No, no, let's not do that. I'll throw two more no-nos in there as yeah. well. Mm, I'm just glad this story thus far has had a happy ending. Man, it makes yeah, me nervous. It's still a wild animal. Ooh, all right, the color of up. your shoes. The color of my shoes, yeah. I don't even want to talk about that snake. Mm. Mm, Bell goes way over this way. All right, coming up, I get to sit down with the money man himself, once again, Bruce Porter. Always great information, so don't go away. Ozarks Live is just getting started.